Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ozark Outpost in Dixon, Missouri. This is the Commonwealth, January 1940. Great Britain has its three tech chips. And it's going to try to move along advanced ASW and wartime economy, and they're going to try and finish improved construction. So, advanced ASW is a seven, missed with a two. Wartime economy is a seven. I got that with an eight. So that goes to stage two. And improved construction is a seven. Mm, I missed that with a three. All right, I'll do their build. Great Britain started with 15 pounds in its bank. They have spent 11 on a medium bomber and four on a colonial infantry. India had nine. They've spent three to finish their uh, major ship or minor shipyard for Bombay and the remaining six on two infantry. Anzac has five that they're going to save. Okay. Over here in the North Sea, as you might imagine, the Admiralty just doesn't care for these German ships sitting out here. So, this destroyer and this submarine are gonna come over here and attack the German transport and torpedo boat destroyer. And then the remainder of the home fleet is coming over here to attack these three Germans. Uh, I'll do the little one up here first. They got in there and did it, but the uh, German torpedo boat destroyer scored a hit as he was going down and uh, killed the submarine. Now we'll do the other fight. The home fleet got the Germans, uh, in the process, they lost a destroyer and took a damage on their battleship. Okay. Now, down here in the mid, the Admiral in command has said he's not playing anymore. He wants to get in there and try a bold move. Uh, Prime Minister Churchill has agreed and given him uh, the okay to proceed. So the Mediterranean squadron here is gonna attack the Italian fleet. They're gonna see what they can do. Uh, the uh, Italians outnumber the uh, Brits by three ships. But we'll see what happens. Well, it was a hell of a fight that went on for a while. The, the British fought it down to the, the last man to do as much damage as they could. And uh, they reduced the size of the Italian fleet from 12 ships down to just four. And that included killing one of the Italian battleships. The uh, British tactical bomber 
got uh, two target select hits to uh, take that battleship out. Uh, the British commander uh, failed in his escape role, so he went down with his fleet. So it uh, it's kind of a, a sad result for the Royal Navy, but they have more income to replace their lost ships than the Italians do, so long term I think it was the right move. All right, now, down here, India has decided they're going to get in on the action as well. They're going to come over here and try and help the Free French out. Uh, the Indian Ocean Squadron here is uh, these two transports are going to load the three infantry from Calcutta and the lone infantry in southern India. And they're all going to go one, two, three over to here and invade Italian Somaliland. The uh, fighter on the escort carrier will be going in to support the invasion troops and the battleship and uh, heavy cruiser will provide shore bombardment. All right, the Indian troops got it done. Uh, the shore bombards missed. The uh, infantry got one hit. The fighter got the other one. And one of the defending Italians scored a hit. So that was double casualties on the first round and killed two Indian infantry. So, India goes up one, Italy goes down one, and uh, now that they're at war and the Suez Canal is closed to the Italians, uh, they no longer have a way to get reinforcing troops down there to the Horn of Africa. They can put uh, a single militia per turn if they want into Eritrea, but uh, they can't get any more attacking troops in down there. <clears throat> Not unless they capture Suez. Okay, that's it for combat. Um, India is not going to have any non-combat. Um, neither is Anzac. So as long as we're pointed right here, we will go ahead and... Uh, Place units for India. The two infantry are going one to Calcutta and one to southern India. The minor shipyard, I said, is going here to Bombay, and I'm sighting it right there on that border between these two sea zones so they can build ships in either one they want. Okay, that's it for there. Over here. The British are going to have a non-combat move in Africa. Push him down there. He's in Eritrea. Um, these two Indian infantry 
our non-combat moving down there into Nubia. The Colonial Infantry will be placed here at Eastern Egypt. There was already one there. Not that it... Well, it matters just a, a bit, not a whole bunch, because... This turn, the British can place some uh, special operations units. They're going to put the uh, SAS Long Range Desert Group there in eastern Egypt under a regular infantry. That was why I kept the infantry separate because I'd done a colonial and there was already a regular there. Because the rule stipulates you cannot put that under a colonial infantry which is, well, I mean, it's for simplicity for the game, but uh, historically, the Long Range Desert Group was colonial troops. They were Rhodesians. But that's neither here nor there. And then over here... The British are going to build their medium bomber over here at Ottawa. And they have the opportunity to get the uh, first commando brigade into the game by placing it under an existing Marine in home country. And since uh, Great Britain went to war with both Germany and Italy this turn, they pick up two new commanders at London. So get those guys in there. Uh, let's see. Now, we come over here because the British have a turn to roll and uh, replace the commander that was killed in the Mediterranean. All right. They are looking for a seven or higher to replace that lost commander. Right, a one didn't do it. All right. Let's see here. Since uh, Denmark and Britain are both at war with Germany. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. They're not controlled. They're aligned now. So, let me get over here and fix this up. Yeah. So, this Denmark is now aligned to Great Britain. So, we put the roundel on there. that a British militia and then the same thing up here in Norway since they're both at war with Germany Norway is now also aligned with Britain so put a roundel on Finnmark put a roundel on Trondelag make that Uh, grab the right piece. Make that a British militia. And a roundel on southern Finland. And we'll 
replace him with the British infantry. Alright. That's it for all of that kind of stuff, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, Britain picked up one for Finnmark, one for Southern Finland, and one for Denmark. So that's three more for uh, their income. There's another one down here. Get all this stuff. Belgium, even though they lost their country, they still have Belgian Congo down here. So that now also is going to align to the British. So get around along there. Make him a British militia. That's one more for Britain's income. That's a total of four they picked up through alignment. Now let me make sure there isn't anybody else I have forgotten. Nope. I think that's it. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's, that's all of that stuff. So now we'll come over here and do some money stuff. Well, Gotta turn this way again real quick. I still am not. It just seems strange to me on FEC and ANZAC that they would not just automatically go to wartime economy, but I looked at their reference sheets and uh, where everybody else is, where, like, for example, Great Britain shows in its uh, peacetime income bonuses that if Germany goes to war with uh, France, Great Britain automatically goes to wartime income. That entry uh, isn't included for FEC or ANZAC, so I have to assume they don't get to do that. But FEC does get a D6 role to increase to get up to wartime income. And they rolled a two, so they're going to go up two more. All right, so now we'll get over here and look at the money chart. I think we're up to the point to do that. I don't think I owe anybody else any rolls. No, I think it looks like we're good. So, Great Britain is at uh, 25 plus the four they picked up from alignment, brings them up to 29. So that's how much they'll have for next turn. Uh, Anzac, or excuse me, India, is now sitting on 12. That's how much they'll have. Anzac is still collecting its five plus the five they saved will give them ten next turn. Ozark Outpost. Over and out.